I don't have words. I, I don't have words. On this week's episode, we're going to take you along with us as we travel from Wyoming to Montana. We actually traveled through Yellowstone National Park on our way to Montana, which was super cool to see everything again. We stay at our Harvest Host that is located at a llama farm. I'm really good at finding these off, <laughs> off the beaten path Harvest Host. We traveled through some torrential downpour and a pretty decent storm. And then if you stay tuned until the end, you'll see all the mishaps that happened as we were setting up at our new campsite. So she said, stay straight. Okay, hey, now just pull up and then just back in here at an angle. Sometimes mistakes happen. Let's take a look back at some of the fun things that we did while we were in Wyoming. We stayed at the Longhorn Ranch Lodge and RV Resort, which we loved. It was so beautiful with all the trees and the green grass and plenty of room for the boys to run around and play. It was so awesome because we had the best of both worlds. In the front, there were rolling hills and mountains. You could even see snow-topped mountains. And in the back were these awesome painted hills, which offered a lot of adventure for Jonathan and Logan. All right, we're taking a break. We've been about two and a half miles. We left our bikes heading to that. It's going to be so cool. You ready, dude? Good. Oh, white down. That's why it's never a good idea to record and ride your bike. Oh. Like I said, we loved all the big trees until... So we were so excited to get a beautiful campsite with trees until... A windstorm. A windstorm. <laughs> The campground was situated along Wind River, which was so awesome to be able to just walk by and see the river. The boys loved playing near it. And as you can see, it was right behind the campground. Right here in the central courtyard, there's a laundry room, which is super important when you're traveling full time and don't have a washer and dryer in your rig. They also have these cute little cabins that they rented out and a general store that had snacks and souvenirs. We loved watching the boys use their imagination and play as explorers. So our time in Wyoming offered us some good and bad, like having tire trouble and needing to get that changed. We witnessed beautiful views, spectacular sunsets, hiked around lakes. We witnessed so much wildlife like moose, grizzly bear, 
and bison. And let's not forget about the mud volcano. We loved you, Wyoming, and had a blast. Now, let's get back to our travel day to Montana. Okay, so we have landed in Montana and we are coming into our harvest host for the evening and it is on a five mile dirt road. It should be fun. I'm really good at finding these off, <laughs> off the beaten path harvest hosts. Off the beaten path. <laughs> Gorgeous view there. Okay, so we finally got in our spot. Beautiful, beautiful place. About five miles off the paved road. It's actually a llama farm. We have some neighbors also. We've got the generators running just to charge the batteries up, cool everything off. It was a little hot today. So now, I'm gonna get set up, catch a cool time lapse of the sunset and enjoy the evening tomorrow we go the rest of our trip to our campground in montana So we're connected, hooked up. Mandy and the boys are in the general store for this harvest host. Uh, we had a great night's sleep. We ended up staying on generators all night just to make sure everything stayed charged up. We had a fan running. Uh, we ran the AC a little bit. But yeah, all, all in all, a fantastic night. Uh, we're leaving now to head on our rest of our journey. Um, we don't have that far of a drive, which is kind of the great thing about Harvest Host. If you have like a longer trip, say nine, I think it was going to be nine to ten hours from the, our last campground to our next campground, Harvest Hosts are a fantastic way to cut that trip a little bit shorter if you can spare a night. For us, it was great because it gave us about a four or five hour ride here, spent a night, and now a uh, much shorter, um, I think like three hours or something to our rest of our trip today. Just makes it much more enjoyable. Sometimes I've always been guilty of 
rushing from point A to point B. And Harvest Host just sort of gives you the opportunity to slow down a little bit and enjoy. And not to mention the view here has been amazing. It's uh, four to five miles off the main road. You have to come down dirt roads to get here. So like, you know, we had to get a little dust on the truck and the camper, but this place is awesome. And uh, it's, it's fun just to disconnect sometimes and get to these little quiet places. There were other campers here last night. So some Harvest Host we went to only has one site this one has had multiple so all in all a uh, fantastic trip and as soon as mandy and the boys get out here we're going to uh continue on our journey everybody say bye harvest host bye harvest host <laughs> first gas trip of the day we've uh, also hit a cool pilot with a McDonald's so Mandy and the boys are getting us some breakfast we're making really good time beautiful country out here What you got, boys? Please don't drop it. Breakfast. How much farther can I come back? You can come back. Come back. Come on back. Come on back. Whoa. 
Okay. See how I have to give this thing lots of slack? I got a feeling this gonna come down. Okay, hey, now just pull up and then just back in here at an angle. Okay, so I wanna give a little bit of context here because that part of the video when we're setting up is when everything went wrong. I backed up fine, set my jacks fine, right? I noticed the sight was a little twisted, but then I went to auto level. I didn't catch any of this on footage, but my camper would not auto level. I kept getting an error. It was trying my sight. It's hard to tell from this angle but the sight is downhill and and it's twisted and so as i tried the auto level kept getting an error i told mandy pull up back up like we'd have to back up to the camper i'd have to reset my jacks to try to get rid of the error i'd pull the truck up i'd get her to move it and on the second or third time when she was backing up we lost eye contact i came around the side of the camper she didn't realize what was going on and for some reason rather than stopping she just kept backing up and she hit the tongue on our fifth wheel chipped it pretty good which is just paint i can touch that up but what i can't touch up is this I, I don't have words. I, I don't have words. Sometimes mistakes happen. So, it happened. We all, we just kind of had to go our separate ways when it first happened. Again, I didn't catch any of it on video, but we eventually could laugh about it because it made no sense why she was backing up but couldn't see me. And it also made no sense why I left her backing up without giving her some sort of coordination so that was that problem the other problem with auto level i had to end up leaving and ran to walmart and picked up some of these lynx levelers and that was the only way i was able to get my camper to somewhat level for me correctly you can see i use several blocks here several blocks on that side and I guess it gave it enough to where it could go high enough on this rear end and, and get everything leveled. Still, it was by far, this is Montana. We've traveled across the country. We've hit probably a dozen or more campgrounds. And this is the first one where I actually had auto level issues. So it was a learning curve. We learned, had to get a few things to help us get through it. We also ended up with a dented truck. It was a stressful afternoon. Other than that, the trip's been great. We got some great footage coming next week to show you guys with the glacier. We went to Flathead Lake, did swimming. Amazing. But this was quite the fiasco and probably one of the hardest days we've ever had setting up and definitely the most damage caused at any given time. So yeah, this was a uh, lot going on in this video. I hope you guys learned something and I will catch you guys next week.